please hit the notification bell and also hit the like button. This helps in our ratings with the videos and we appreciate it. And be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you. On uh, Tiger, November 28683. It's uh, May the 27th. Air Mods Northwest. I'm just going to walk around and document some things about the aircraft before we get started on it. And uh, first, the airplane's got a fairly fresh paint job on it, done by uh, Flying Colors in Santa Maria, California. Very nice paint job. We've got to be very, very careful with it. I'm going to suggest that we put some co uh, covers over the the uh, lightning holes and the stabilizer but it's not a mandatory thing okay, he's got a couple of antennas, a GPS and an ADS-B antenna up there com antenna on the back <coughs> a couple of little dingles right there that didn't get fixed before they painted it People that painted this airplane did seminars down at the American Yankee Association convention and pretty pretty serious about their work. Uh, one, the airplane is horribly out of rig and cable tensions are uh, well, see if I can get it to do it. Pump the elevator up and down. You hear the cable slapping the floor in there. That's back here in the back. That's the that's the elevator cables slapping the floor. Mm, you sure got a lot of noise up there. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, this real loose cable tensions. Yeah. And uh, the rudder's way out of trim. We had to hold the right rudder all the way back flying this thing. That's what he told me. Yeah. But I told him to check We'd, the trim tab. Well, it's it's not bent over, but you'd have had to bend it 90 degrees to help. So I said, leave it alone. No we'll hold it. Because I said it's a matter of rigging. Yeah, that's all. So so yeah, we took we took turns. <laughs> one <laughs> foot <laughs> foot go numb, though, then or, the other one would take over. <laughs> Moving around to the engine compartment, now, he's got a lot of cooling issues with this engine, and I can see why. The baffle seals are terrible, and uh, I've never quite seen anything like this. So, First time I've ever seen that bad. We're so these baffles are coming off. It's going to get on your baffle seal. Do you see this the RTV that got packed up back in there? Yeah, I noticed that this morning when I just got that. When I was in here, I looked at that and I thought, my no. gosh, going to be a lot of RTV to cut out. Yeah, you know, the. Uh, one of the things I wanted to get here, the uh, lifting lug for the engine, which is supposed to be loosened and laid back on these things, like many, is standing up and slamming the upper cowling, which serves to destroy the upper cowling and make things vibrate. Uh, this thing's got a, it's picking up some kind of oil temperature from here. I think that's for the JPI, I'm not sure. Uh, it is. And then this is uh, oil pressure probably going, that's going through this bulkhead fitting here, going back. So that's where they're actually picking up the oil pressure at, which is totally the wrong place to do it. It's supposed to be picked up from right back in that, that port right back in there which is a very difficult one to get at so we'll probably just tend to leave it alone uh, yeah. uh, I don't know what we're going to find when we get underneath of this thing yeah, well okay there this this little bottom baffle is just flopping we got a lot of oil this thing is really leaking a lot of oil Ken this whole bottom is so saturated, both sides are just caked. Yeah, this engine was just torn down for inspection after his prop strike. 
I noticed when they put the thing back in, the, the engine mounts are really in pretty deteriorated condition, so they obviously didn't put new engine mounts on. And the thing, did you notice that the, that the engine sets high? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it probably needs one washer under each upper engine mount. Right, and that would kick the, that kick, bring it down. Kick it, kick it down, yeah, it's, it down. it's centered left to right gear on this thing is totally flopping and loose. We'll have to rebush the... Uh, oh yeah, I've, I've seen 14, 15 knots picked up just rigging. Okay. No tension on the... No tension at all. Uh, the bevel washers might not be correctly installed, but the one thing Kenny was happy was it did have a cotter pin in it when they flew. Spin, spin the nose wheel. Oh. Ooh. Loose. Uh, nose wheel uh, is the tire is good. It feels like it's spinning good, but as far as the fairing goes, yeah. that is sad. No, I mean as far as rotation. Well, if you give it a spin, does it stop? It comes around about a three-quarter turn and stops. Okay, that's that's good then. Okay, down. Yep, you're good to go. Wow, when you just did that, yeah, with the wear that we have yeah. in the bushings and the fork, yeah, it went like that. Yeah. Uh, As you put the weight on it, 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 it went to the low side, so we're going to have wear at the top of the bearing on this side, yeah. and then wear on the bearing on this side, and these two well, sections. Well, it'll be, it'll be worn in the front on the right. bottom, on the in back half, on the top. Right, from the rocking. Well, yeah, just from the pressure. Wow. And oh, I'm, I'm afraid that no strut spindle is probably going to look like the craters of the moon. Rusty. Okay, we're going to do a kind of a walk around here and document things that we see that uh, put the abrasion boots on here and uh, okay got a crack here in the uh, leading edge of this fillet fairing now watch up here to the forward edge of the dorsal we're split okay from we're here, all the cracked way all the side. way around that dorsal fin should have been replaced with the fiberglass before it's painted. That's that's a damn shame to put that much work in a paint job on a plastic dorsal fin that's already busted. Yep. We've got a crack in the tail cone. Typical place for it. Yep. But it's running up through there and that's something we'll have to repair from the inside. Uh, the tail light is not operating so got to do that. And this, these parts are all available new fiberglass corner of this wing walk strip chipped off. These should have been peeled off and painted on or replaced. Looks like they painted over the old original strips. Uh, we're missing the plugs out of the bottom of both steps. Yeah. Shims out here on this end. Yeah, but no lateral play either. Well, yeah, because there's no shims on the other end. Yeah. That those should be split the yeah. difference between toast, busted stop drills. I'm getting a lot of moisture in here, and that's not good for the... Well, that, that's, this thing is just crazed out. Boots yeah. replaced. He and I just <clears throat> discussed the windshield's got an awful lot of sparklies in it. Getting up here to the engine compartment. This thing is just <clears throat> lots of problems in here. We got a lot of exhaust leaks. Got a oil cooler bolt falling out. It's wiring they got wadded up back here. I think this might have something to do with number three cylinder running hot. This thing's got the stainless hoses here for the oil cooler, but look at the tight of that bend in that thing front baffling around here. Well, all the baffle seals are just horrible. That's just not acceptable. Yeah. That is just not acceptable. Yeah, Big hard gap. Work? Look at the gap osis that we've got in here. Look at the length of the bolts. Yeah, wrong hard Look how crusty that is. Yeah, wrong, wrong, wrong. That, I mean, that's just allowing so much exhaust to exit the exhaust stacks yeah. and both sides. Front one the same way. Front one's the same way on those two. Yeah, see, and that's that's the hot exhaust yeah. gas is coming out and going Melted in here. snake wrap, yeah. Yep, and then so yeah, this this stuff needs to be gotten away from here and brought back. Right, and routed back. And we'll try to get it out of there. Well, you, look look at all look the look at that, all the mess. 
Yeah. <laughs> you, can see, out. you can see it wore out, and yeah. then they just flipped and put it out. Oh, we'll just put it on the outside. Tire wrap on, folks, folks. on metal. Yeah, we, we really need to pull the prop to, oh. to check, you know. Yeah. Check the installation and everything. Right. That's what I want to go and, and do. And while it's off, like I say, we can clean the thing up, mask it off. Okay, a couple more cracks to document here in the uh, left elevator tip. We have a crack running through there, and there's another one starting right back here. We've got a leaky fuel drain valve on the right wing as well, so we'll be defueling both wings. And I want to take a good look here at the, the interesting touch up of paint there. It looks like the looks like some paint peeled off of this thing from the uh, masking tape. We're going to take a look at that when we get it off. And as I mentioned before, the plugs are missing out of the bottom of both steps. It is. <laughs> ELT antenna on the bottom. Are you serious? Got the prop bolts binding up here. More than likely what this is, is the, the pressure has squished these the, the steel doubler and choked up on the bolts. My gosh. You gotta be coming out. Yeah, now you're out. Okay, let's just head over to here, Keith. Oh, she has. Look at the back place. Oh yeah, she's all punched out. And so you can see yeah. what it's done to the bolts, folks. It's really put a big This has absolutely ruined this set of bolts. Yeah, the CAD plating is all scarred up. These bolts would be rejected in a minute. Uh, feel, feel of the ridging, the metal chafing. The other thing I want to get noted on here before I forget to get it and fix it, uh, all of this firewall lip should be sticking absolutely 90 degrees forward. You see how this is all bent down and warped. I'll take duckbill pliers and work that up, uh, support the cowling so it doesn't push in and out. And that's what causes all of this fracturing and everything. That's why they put this piece of crap in here to double the thing up. It may be a little bit longer than anticipating your airplane to be. I'm going to try it. We're going to try to do the best we can to get it out of here. Okay? Okay. I'm hoping we're not going to find too much. Want the wheels off. We're no. going to do repack the bearings, inspect everything, the whole nine yards. This is yeah. just... Yeah, the brakes, as Phil said, are metal to metal. And uh, this, is a, this is a good thing. I 
I told the owner as we taxied out, and I observed how he was taxing it at about 1100 RPMs with the brakes on, and then releasing a little pressure to turn. That we got to lock this thing up because it wants to roll back, and I don't want to hit the door. Well, I want to get this thing. Okay. I want to get this thing up on the on the stand. We're gonna need it. I there. don't think we're gonna get it on the stand because of the two antennas. Well, uh, we'll figure that out. Well, we've seen anyway, I've done this one before. Anyway, the the uh, you know what? he uh, I told him I said that if you taxi at low RPMs and uh, use rudder for your turns and augment with brake is one way to taxi your Grumman, the proper way. The improper way is to taxi at 1100 to 1200 RPMs with the brakes on and release a little pressure to turn. That makes the difference between 20 hours and <laughs> two or three hundred hours on your brake pads. Well, this is a good example of it. Hey, there you go, man. You can see that. Good find, Keith. I can't really see them from in here, but... Uh, yeah, I know. There's just no brake pads there. There's no brake pads the, at all. Uh, pull the light away. Okay, just, just a little bit of light. There we go. Get a little bounce lighting. That's and they're uh, chewing in. There we go. Yeah. Now I got what I want to see. Look at that. And it's uh, chewing into the rotors. Yeah. Well, we got a few more things apart. Wheels are off. The mains anyway. Wing tips are off. Canopies off. Interiors out. Looks like we got a pretty wore out main tire down there. Lots of garbage underneath of the tunnel. Keith just pointed out a little dent here in the honeycomb back of the forward uh, torque tube bolt that I didn't get on video earlier. Brake pressure plate and captures. Uh, what we got so far, the canopy rails here, uh, very gungy, gooey. Okay, tie down ring is twisted on this thing. I'll try to straighten that thing up. This area back here, obviously, this was painted, all assembled. I'm talking about these parts in here. They probably took the whole elevator off as a unit. Take a good look here. I'm going to push it over until it hits the stop. See that thing hopping around? Means that bearing is worn in there. Okay, over to this wing. And again, got the same deal out here with uh, lots of wear. However, it does have a very new looking pedo tube. And that's a good thing. These things are rarer than hen's teeth. You can buy them new, and they are $3,200. That, gra that gasket is flat. Okay, you can go ahead. Okay, here's the uh, um, no strut out of here. And. Uh, we got damage underneath the uh, wheel pant. Obviously this was done when this thing got porpoised. Man. Ohio? Look at this. Is that correct? No hardware. Oh. oh. What happened? Yeah, so, so they had this thing bolted in instead of riveted in, and all the bolts fell out. Uh, Same here, the, too. Nylocks. You well, at least there's bolts in there. Wow. Let me have the phone. 
guys, no storks. Something else. Be interesting to see what the uh, spindle looks like when it comes out. Yeah, we'll know that in a few. Okay, there's that. Okay, so this went like, here was this, this, and these are cupped together so they're not creating a spring tension like this, folks. They were like this, so you can see no. that way, incorrect. And then that one, and this is a flat washer. Nope, it's a... That's another Belleville double washer. Belleville okay. washer. That one had the rim down. Right. And these were... These were like this. So they were just all stacked together. They weren't... Correct. They were not put in they were not spring tension. Spring Because okay. if it was spring tension, we'd want to put that one that way. Right, yeah. Like that, so we got the concaves versus... Yeah. Okay, so that's and then, wrong. And there's no big flat washer and on no top. And no big flat washer here, folks. So now... Um, let me get a little bit cleaner one. Okay, that was pretty wet. Yeah, that's, that's okay. I can, I can wipe. Well, okay, stretch in good, good condition. There's an o ring. There's no o ring at the top at all. No o ring. So now what we need to look at is what's inside, what's inside the fork. Is the thrust washer in there? <laughs> you wipe the top of the back there. Yeah. I'm just going to kind of do an area that we can kind of see where the wear might be occurring on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're working. We're oh, you brass. can see the brass. Yep. And now if we go to the bottom, which... Yeah, that's going to be... Yep. There's brass showing yep. on that yeah, side. That's normal. <sighs> okay. Well, just go ahead and pop the... We'll take that thing apart. Boy, this thing's... Yeah. Whew. It can be fixed up top like that. Now that we got it off, we should be able to fix it here perfectly yeah. fine. The, those nylock nuts behind there, there's no th no protrusion. The threads aren't even coming through the nylock. So, so this side over here all came apart because all fell out. All fell out. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, well, uh, careful with this guy's paint. I want to get some rubber laid down over here. Okay, we're getting ready to. Uh, Vacuum up this mess inside here. Or get a picture of it. The garbage underneath of that tunnel. Okay, we're looking at the outboard support or inboard support. Okay, just easy. Up and down. Okay. That that flopping in there. Just a minute. Do it again. Okay, that bearing there and that support is worn out. So we're going to have to pull the flap and get at it. Now also, take note that the uh, aileron torque tube is nowhere near centered okay, but coming it, through that flap torque is tube. Is it rubbing on the tube at all? If it's making contact, uh, it's a critical issue. I don't see any grindings, okay. but okay. but it, we ought to try to try to. That's the, that we need to make that adjustment on that plate then. That's yes. on, the, on the flat plate bracket because if you have it one way, it'll ride hard. And if that's you get, you that's get right. Centered, it'll you just have to loosen yeah. those two three eighths. We're just just about contacting on the bottom. Still on this aircraft that came out of California. This just came out of a paint shop, and we're recording this because this is definitely a safety of flight issue. Uh, these bolts aren't even, they're installed, but uh, the mechanic whoever installed them did not tighten these, forgot to do it. Both left and right aileron are like this. Unfortunately to say that, that's really, really not good. This thing here is good. They've been put on over paint. Um, both ailerons have got these gnarly niches in them where it looks like somebody's grabbed them with a pair of channel locks. The wing straps were put on with these nut clips on the trailing edges and uh, you see the damage that's been done here to the aileron from a little bit of pressure on the thing pushing up. Okay, we got issues here that I want to document. Damn it. It's all right. Um, Get out of your way. The alternator wires. Put this thing on night shot, see if I can get. There we go. 
turn it green. Okay, this is the ground. Now these are the two shields coming off of the alternator wires here that were brought to this little stake on here, butt connector, and that was pulled out from that, broken off. And we just reached it over and went ahead to get a hold of this. This is a, one of the main alternator leads. Just broke right off there. So we got to do some repairs on this. This, this is really interesting. Well, this is the way I'm going to leave it. God, this is the way I'm going to leave it. Cylinders are off. New ones are coming from Lycon. Four ported and flowed. Factory fresh new ones. Got the baffling to redo. Straps to put on the wings. New uh, plastic underneath of them. Got all the parts laid out over here. IA is going to be in to uh, inspect all these things and help Phil put it back together. And there's the four rejected cylinders there. Well, that's how you take an hour and a half video and bring it down to 25 minutes and show 123 things we found wrong on an airplane. We hope you found it useful and informative. Thanks for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman. And in addition, there's a little treat about 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm doing web work and other stuff. Here's my cat coming down, playing with a mouse and meowing and just having a good time with me in the wee hours of the night. So I thought I'd throw this into you as a little treat. Y'all please enjoy.